and welcome to this mini session about harnessing the power of our stories for social change. My name is Felicia Burnett and I'm the National Director for Healthcare at Moms Rising. I am so excited to talk to you today about storytelling and how we can use the power of personal stories to shift narratives, create culture change, and win on public policy proposals. Sharing our stories is an effective tactic for getting a message across, and I think it's a bit intuitive that stories are more memorable than sharing facts and figures. Stories paint a picture that data and numbers alone can't show. They activate a different part of our brain, create a sense of connection and empathy, and build familiarity and trust between the story sharer and those who are hearing the story. Simply put, sharing stories works because people react to people. They react to the lived experiences of others. And sharing stories with lawmakers help them understand how policy and budget decisions influence families across the nation. So in short, today you're going to learn about why personal stories are important for social change and who should share their story, how Moms Rising uses storytelling in the work that we do, and what elements actually make up a good story. And at the end of the session, you're also going to have the opportunity to share a story of your own, but don't worry, we will give you all the tools you need to put it together and the process is super quick and super simple. On that note, I want to encourage you to get a pen and paper or however you like to take notes uh, so it's ready for later on in the session. Okay, so by way of introduction, and I think some important background for this session is I want to start out by sharing with you my own personal story. When my son Ethan was born in 2006, I was beyond excited and quite a bit nervous about becoming a mom. His dad was a law student at the time, and I was a manager at a retail store. When we learned that he needed to start chemotherapy at just six weeks old to fight a life-threatening tumor, we were devastated. I had to quit working to care for him. And with that, uh, with the loss of my job, we also lost my family's health insurance. And we were incredibly fortunate that Ethan was able to qualify for Medicaid, which saved his life. And he is now a happy, healthy 14 year old. But I wasn't able to get health insurance again until the Affordable Care Act was enacted because I have what insurance companies have decided to call pre existing conditions. This meant going several years without really being able to afford to see a doctor or to buy any medications that were prescribed when I did. So when I came across Moms Rising back in 2007, it caught my attention that they weren't only advocating for healthcare for children, but for everyone. Because they know, like we know, that healthy parents are critically important for healthy children and healthy communities. So back then, I shared my story with them. This was in 2009, uh, and it was during the lead up to the vote on the Affordable Care Act. And I was among the first people, actually, to buy health insurance on the exchange on healthcare.gov when it opened in 2013. And I've been advocating for health care with Moms Rising ever since. Uh, this, you know, this has led me to have some incredible experiences. I've spoken on the Hill several times. I was also invited to the White House. Um, but what has been the biggest honor has been that I've been able to work to lift up the voices and stories of parents in the health policy process. This was incredibly important during the healthcare repeal fight in 2017. Thousands, if not millions of people spoke out and shared their stories, and it ultimately created enough pressure to stop the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, which a lot of people thought it was imminent after the election of 2016, but we were able to stop and that would have brought back the terrible practice of denying people with pre-existing conditions healthcare coverage amongst a myriad of other horrible, awful things. So this is why personal stories are not only important for social change, but also for policy change. Sometimes it's really simple for lawmakers to, you know, look at 
numbers and balance sheets and not really realize that the decisions that they make have life and death consequences. You know, your story matters. Our stories matter. Stories can change the direction and destiny of public policy. Stories are significantly more memorable than facts and figures. And it's important to remember that storytellers are experts in their own experience. And when others hear experiences that sound like their own, it makes them feel less alone. We know that when multiple people have the same experience, the same challenge again and again, that we have a systemic problem, not an individual one. So it will take a systemic change, not an individual one to fix it. Public policies fall short when they don't reflect the stories of real people, especially families who are, impact, who are most impacted. And these are often people of color, immigrants, and LGBTQ families. When new laws or regulatory rules are being proposed, hearing from those who will be most impacted can greatly influence those who are tasked with making the final decisions. When healthcare policy is being decided, we need to be hearing from people with chronic diseases or who are medically fragile to better understand how to meet their needs and improve quality of life. When police and public safety policies are being decided, we need to hear from people in communities who are more strongly policed to better understand how this impacts their daily lives and whether they do in fact feel more safe or if current policies are actually having the opposite impact. When childcare policy is being decided, we need to be hearing from parents with young children and from providers alike so that we can better understand how to support this critical system that allows our nation's families and economy to thrive. When immigration policy is being decided, we need to hear the voices and stories of those who were not born in this country, but who call it home all the same. When gun safety policies are being decided, we need to hear the voices of those who have been impacted by gun violence in their community or lost a loved one to suicide. And when workplace policies are being decided, we need to hear the experiences of workers and how these decisions fit in with their lives outside of work and their families and with our community as a whole. So when it comes to the ever-changing landscape of public policy, we all eventually have a story to share. And there are a lot of ways that you can do it. At Moms Rising, sharing stories is an integral part of every step of our advocacy process. We share stories on social media and on our blog. We put storytellers in contact with members of the media. We create issue storybooks that are delivered to Congress when they're considering legislation on a specific topic. And often our members even get to speak at events with lawmakers and give testimony in hearings. Now, as a reminder, you are going to need something to write with in a couple of minutes. It can be a pen, paper, blank document on your computer, whatever you're comfortable with. But first, let's hear from our Moms Rising fellow, Roshana Reynolds in Washington State. You are the expert of your own experience. It's helpful to think about your story and how it connects to different issues ahead of time. Like everyone, your story probably has a lot of details and may connect to more than one issue area. It's helpful when telling your story for a call to action whether with the legislator or the news media. Stories are also our own and consent is important. We can tell our own stories, but not others. There are reasons why some may not want to or can't share their own stories. Trauma, safety, non-consensual emotional labor, or fear of retaliation from an employer. You can Practice powerful storytelling. It can be helpful to think of it in chunks. Chunk number one could be, what's the content? Number two, what's the challenge? Number three, what was the outcome? Also, what's the call to action? Here's my story. My name is Roshana Reynolds, and I am a new mom and a new wife, and I just had a baby that has a very serious medical condition. And I have been working as a teacher for a very long time. And as a strong black woman, I have fought for everything that I've earned in my life. 
and I'm still struggling. I can't afford childcare for my son. Also, the preschool that I worked at was so expensive, even with a teacher discount, I still wouldn't be able to have my son go to childcare. My husband works, we only have one income, and we're doing the best that we can for, our, for ourselves to provide for our family. My story is different. It's unique, but it's also powerful. We are all storytellers. It is how we relate to one another as neighbors, as friends, as family, members, and as people. It is a essential part of how we relate to one another as moms and as parents. Storytelling is a key part of how we push movements forward. Whether it's during a protest or a committee hearing, stories are at the heart of people-powered movements. Remember, together we are a powerful force of women and families. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Roshana. All right, are you ready to dig into your own personal power as a storyteller? So let's recap those, person, those elements that make up a good story. First, the content. You wanna talk about who is the person experiencing the story? Like, who are you? Who is your community? Where and when is the story happening? What places, people, and experiences shape this story? Number two, what are the barriers and obstacles that you faced? Are there villains in this story? If so, who or what are they? And then number three, the outcome. What happened as a result of these challenges? How was your life or your job or your health or your family impacted? How could it have looked differently? What would that have meant for your family? And then finally, number four which is the call to action. Who else is experiencing something similar? What would you like to change based on your story and the experience of others? Is it a law? Is it a cultural norm? Is it both? Who needs to change it? Is it Congress? Is it the legislature or maybe employers or managers? And that's it. You have a powerful story that will help create social and policy change. So now we're ready for the exciting part. We've created a simple Moms Rising Storytelling Mad Lib that you can use to quickly and easily write up your own story. For anyone who hasn't used a Mad Lib before, they are super simple. You just fill in the blank for each number and voila, you have a story. I'll give you an example. You can follow along with this slide. And here's one I asked my son to do. He said, I'm a student and I'm in the eighth grade in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have found it challenging to feel under a constant threat when I am in school because of how many school shootings there are and how easy it is for people to access guns. When I am in school, it is stressful as a student to feel that something so terrifying could easily happen. And this feeling is validated when we have had lockdowns. Our leaders must show us that they care about us by limiting access to firearms that are used in school shootings. That's it, as simple as that. So I'm going to leave this uh, slide up here so that you can follow along and we'll give you a few minutes to write up your story, fill in your Mad Lib, and then when you're ready, you will go to the link uh, that's posted, it's on a, it's on a program called Soapbox, and you'll be able to immediately record your story. Um, just some technical things. You'll want to make sure that you're recording in a well-lit place and that you're, if you're doing it on your phone, that it's in the horizontal mode. Um, you can also record from your computer. You can pre-record it on your phone and then upload it from there too, whatever works best for you. But if you click the link, you're actually able to record it right there on the, on the web page. Um, and then once you've recorded it, you'll want it to be less than 60 seconds. And once you've recorded it, it'll upload and we'll take a look at it. We'll make sure it has closed captioning and then we'll send you a, a email that 
you can go and share out your story and encourage others to do the same. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for sharing your stories and for being here. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.